Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. You get a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table. I'm not finishing. Good. If I don't think that's enough, I'm going to advise you to reject it and gamble and place the same goods into an auction. I'll be on hand at all times to help and advise you. Today the show comes to you from Grantham in Lincolnshire. Look at this crowd. They're here, they've brought along their goods. They've been here since early morning. What's it going to be today, cash or gamble? Either way, they want the real deal. It's looking like a busy day ahead in the dealer's den here in Grantham, and business is already brewing with Karen. Let's see if our seller can back himself a deal. Hi, Richard. I'm Karen. Hello, Welcome Karen. To the show. Delighted I've been to meet you. Susie Cooper here, haven't I? Absolutely. So, yes. how long have you had these? Well, actually, we've had them since 1988. My wife purchased them in an auction. Mm -hmm. Don't really use them, which seems a great shame. So that's why I'm here today. I'm not knocking the set before we start, but hmm. there would have been a coffee pot. Uh, have you ever? No, we've never had it, to be honest. We've only had the cups and saucers and the, and the milk yeah. jug, yes. OK, yeah. right. It's like a, almost like a transfer fruit, isn't it? Well, they call this black fruit. Black is fruits, it? isn't it? The, well, the a good pattern. guess, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so what have we got? We've got all sorts of... We oh, it's written on there. That's easy, mm. isn't it? Mm. We've got cherry, strawberry and four other fruits going that's here. That's right. OK, and all different colour interiors. All so different colours. We know that's the full coffee set, don't we, apart yeah. from the fact that we would have had the coffee pot. Yeah. It's always lovely quality as Susie Cooper. Mm. And if I turn it over, it should be her name in script. Indeed. If we have a look. Yeah, there we go. Susie Cooper in script. Bone China, England. My guess is, what, 50s, 60s? I'd have thought 60s, yeah. Yeah, about yes. 60s, looking yeah. at the mark. Yeah. Can you remember um, how much you paid in auction years ago? I really couldn't tell you offhand. I, no. I, honestly, I don't know. All right, money time, isn't Indeed. it? Indeed. <laughs> OK. Right, 20, 40, 60. That's my bid. That's your opening bid, Karen. No, right? that, that's my closing oh, bid, Oh, your closing Richard. bid! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, to be absolutely honest, uh -huh. I don't really want them for more than that. Despite the fact it's colourful and elegant, much like yourself, Karen. Flattery isn't going to get another 20 on that pole, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> I'm okay. a businesswoman at the end of the day. <laughs> OK, you've got a deal, Karen. Oh, excellent. And I hope you're not in trouble with the wife. So do I. <laughs> Hopefully you won't get into too much trouble, Richard. Karen seems to have paid a strong price for that tea set. As people flood in from far and wide, we head over to James's table, where it looks like Claire is determined to make her trip to Grantham worthwhile. So, where have you come from? I live in Northern Ireland. You live in Northern Ireland? Yes. So, you brought along your, um, your crown jewels? I have today, yes. So, tell me all about them. They are left to me by my grandmother, who died uh, about 18 months ago. Do you not like them very much? No, I don't, and I've asked my daughter, and she said they're a bit old-fashioned, so... Um, we just you see, I, I just wonder how old they are. They looked, I mean, I thought when I was looked at this one that it was 1970s. Is that possible? It could be, yeah. Yeah. Nine carat gold? Yes. Yeah. And this is some kind of, what, smoky quartz? I think so, yes. Yeah. So only a semi-precious stone. This is also nine carat, I guess. Yes, it is. Is that is. right? Yeah. And this is another quartz citrine or something? I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is incredibly sharp. I'm not surprised you want to wear yes. this. They're good, they're good knuckle duster, aren't they? <laughs> well... I have to say, they're, they're not beauties, are they? No. Let's face it. <laughs> and I think the value in these is the, is the gold content. Right. I'd like to offer you 20, 40, 50 pounds. For both? Oh, yes. Oh, no, I think you can do better than that. OK, you want more than that. I'll put that away and put down another one of those. So that's 60. No, I still think you could do better than that. I still think they're worth a bit more than that. Yeah. Because they're quite do. old. Ish. Not as old as me. All right, look, I'll try again. I'll give you another five or 65 pounds. No. So the alternative, of course, is to try at auction. Yes. So you're going to try that? Yes, I am. Try at auction. OK, great. Lovely. We'll have a lovely trip back to Northern Ireland. Thank you very much. 
So as Claire flies back to Northern Ireland, the rings wing their way over to the auction. David standing by as they go under the gavel of auctioneer Colin Young. Coming up now are the two dress rings. They're a sixes style and they're set in nine carat gold. Are they going to make the reserve of £80? Well, let's find out. And we have to start the bidding already at 72, 75, at 75, 78, 78 bid, 80 I've got, 80 bid, 82, 82, 85 now, surely. I think they're buying for the scrap value of the nine carat gold. It's at 88. 88 better bid, 90 or not now, at 88 pounds, are we all done? At 88 pounds, 90 now, may I say then, we're done and finished in selling at 88 pounds. Right on the bottom, 88 pounds, a quick calculation. It's just close to £75 after you've taken away the deduction. We'll be sending £75 over to Northern Ireland to Claire. On the day, Claire, you were right on the money. You did the right thing. Back to the dealer's den where Dave and auctioneer Colin Young are looking in on Stuart's first deal. And it looks like he's getting straight to the point with this one. And propelling pencils, actually, so... Yeah. Tell me about them. Have you, have you collected them for a long time? Yep, for about 20, 30 years. As a child, I always wanted a fancy fountain pen. But my mother and father was not that well off. So when I got older and earning my own money, I started collecting them because I always liked fountain pens. OK. Now, Colin, hmm. how's your knowledge on fountain pens and propelling pencils? You must have seen thousands of the things. Yeah, we do see many of them, uh, but it's really the key names that you're going to be looking out for and uh, and just that slightly rare model, um, even on some of the more common names, if there's just a rare model that can make the world a difference. I've looked along for magic names, you know, Mont Blanc and things like that. You, I couldn't see any real magic. There's Waterman's, there's Conway Stewart's, there's Parker's. I like the wild colours. I like these obscure looking ones, that one. Um, I like these grey with the uh, mackerel sort of finish on them. Mm -hmm. Two to three hundred pounds was the independent valuers. Yeah. Where are you going to go for? We went in the region of sort of 150, 250, that sort of range. Sounds like a ten piece, something like that, within that kind of area. Yeah. Now, Stuart, I think he's probably the right man for this. He, he probably has a marketplace, he has collectors who, are, who collect all manner of things. Is he going to buy these? How much is he going to put on the table? Let's find out. They've got to go for the right money, you'll sell them today. That's right. OK, let's have a go. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. I'll do you 180 pounds. 180 pounds on the table. Is that it, I wonder? I think we need to be a little bit more. You think we need to be a bit more? Oh, I think so. I, I'd do 200, but that's my top money. Another 20 pounds coming out, 200 pounds. What do you think about 200? Should he take the cash, should he gamble? I think he should go to auction. But there again, I'm a little bit biased. You are a bit biased. I'm going to get in there, but I agree with our auctioneer, Colin. I think they are worth a gamble. How do you feel about that? Thinking about it, not thinking not about sure. it. Well, just while you're thinking about it, let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneers say. Now, the auctioneer is a bit more conservative, aren't they always? And he says 150 to 250. Independent valuers say 250 to 350. I'm going to leave you with Stuart. He may want to gamble a little bit more himself. I'm saying to you at the moment, they could well be worth a gamble at auction. They might go in the auction a lot better. They're just funny things these days, pens, you, don't, you never know. But that's the best I'm going to give you, so the decision's yours, I'm afraid. So it's over to you. I'll go with them. OK, so that's, that's a, deal. a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. £200, it's a deal. Could we have done better at auction? Of course we could, but our seller was quite happy and was tempted with the cash. Also coming up... Let's have a look in the pocket here. Let's see if there's a little one in there. Right, oh, OK. Oh. That was a very big one, uh, wasn't it? Will Mark carry on counting? You know you want to. Uh, well, no, I don't want to. You really. do, you do, you do. <laughs> Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Grantham. 
There are deals aplenty in the dealer's den today, and a gold family piece has made its way over to Mark's table. Hi, Kim, I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And you bought me in a very nice gold Albert chain here. Yes. Can you tell me anything about it? Well, I think it came from Granny and Grandpa Belgrove. How old is it? Do you know how old it is? That would give me a bit of a clue. Well, from first look, my gut feeling is between 1910 and 1920. I mean, these were predominantly used to hang watches from. Oh, in that case, it might have been Grandpa. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it would have been your, your Grandpa that would have used this. Mm. Um, if we have a look at the item, and there we have the nine carat mark, so that is nine carat gold. It would have been used for a watch. And some people do use them today, but normally they use them for something different, and which yes, has well, happened here. As a child, I always used to have it wrapped around my... A bracelet. Yes, right yeah. Or the necklace. If they're slightly longer, a lot of the people wear them as necklaces. These have gone up in value, but they've gone up for the wrong reason. They've gone up because of the scrap value, mm. not because they're a piece of jewellery and somebody wants to wear it. It's a shame, really. It is it? an awful shame, but I think, you know, the way the market is now, this possibly could end up that way. If you were to sell it, mm -hmm. what would you do with the money? Treat yourself? I could do. My yeah? son's just moved into a house. I could buy him a, a little present. Right, that's great. His first great. house. <laughs> Right, better go to the pocket and put some money on the table. Oh, go on then. This is a bit you like, isn't it? Oh, of course. <laughs> OK. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 20, and 40, and 60, and 80, 200, 20, 40, 60, 280. 300 pounds. Mm. How does that sound to you? Well, it doesn't really sound quite enough because it's a heavy old piece. It's certainly got some weight there, there's no doubt about that. So, how about if I put on another 20, 40, 60, 80? 380 pounds, how does that sound? Well, it sounds as though you're getting closer to where I was thinking, but I think you need to sort of perhaps jump over that bar a bit. I know what bar you're thinking about. Uh. I got <laughs> no. Look, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I've got another £40 there. Mm -hmm. That brings that up to £420. Yeah. That is where I want to be. Can't quite squeeze you for a little bit more. Well... Just a smidgy bit. You know you want to. Uh, well, no, I don't want to, You really. do, you do, you do. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I've got anything. Oh, I'm running really short now. I don't... Let's have a look in the pocket here. Let's see if there's a little one in there. Right, oh. OK. Oh, oh they can't have like that one. That was a very big one, uh, wasn't it? I'll tell you what I do. How about this? I put another £10 on the table for you. There's £430 there. Oh, all right, then. As, so, as you've been so generous. So you're happy to trade at 430 Yes, I am. That's a pleasure. It's a deal. Thank you very much indeed, Kim. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Great haggling skills there, Kim. You certainly gave Mark a run for his money. Over to Karen now, where Brenda's decided that the time is right to part with a family heirloom. Right, we've got a watercolour here. Yeah. I believe it's at George Hamilton Constantine. That's right. And do you know anything about the artist? Yes, he was a friend of my grandparents. Really? Yes. His paintings do sell quite well. Yeah. And he restored a ceiling at Chatsworth House. OK. Right, so he was quite respected of his time then, because yes. I'm sure they wouldn't let him anywhere near a stately home <laughs> if they didn't totally value his work. No. Well, if we have a good look at the watercolour, we've got like a forest glade here, haven't we, yes. with the heathers? And if you look very carefully, you've got like two little huntsmen yes. down in the corner there, mm. which, which enhances the picture a great deal, I yes. feel. I love it. Particularly, I mean, the quality of this frame, that was, a, in its day, it's a very expensive frame. Mm. So is, it, is this the only painting you've got by this artist? No, I've got four altogether. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What, because he was a friend of your grandparents? Yes, I've inherited them, you see. They've, OK. They're spread now around my cousins and my sister. Yeah. Yes. So there's a few in the family? Yes. Oh, so I bet they'd be eager to see what sort of money yes. I have for you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's crack on then. So... 20, 
40, 60, 80, 100. Are we doing well? Not yet. <laughs> 120, 140 pounds. You're going to have to help me here if you're disappointed with that figure. Um, what sort of figure were you looking for, really? Uh, well, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> I gathered that. Right, OK. 160 pounds. You want a second opinion, don't you? <laughs> yes. I think you're about to get one. <laughs> OK. We have two estimations here, 100 to 150, and we've got 150 to 200. Now, there's 160 60 pounds there. Mm. This artist has got a bit of a track record. It's known, Sheffield School. It's an interesting picture. I like the little figures in the foreground. But it's a watercolour, and watercolours aren't explosive at the moment. The question we've got to say is, can you do better at auction? That's the equivalent of 200. It is the equivalent, in fairness, mm. it's the equivalent of 200 pounds, take away um, 30 quid, actually, um, which would be 15%. So that would be 170, 160. She's trying to bamboozle us here. <laughs> I think if we said, get another tenner in, she'd get it in anyways. So... Yes, I would be tempted with 170. <laughs> OK, well, I'm going to go away now because I think there's enough potential in that picture for Karen to give 170 and to make a profit. Mm -hmm. Right, as we say in the trade, I'm not going to lose it for a tenner. So, if I can find one... <laughs> there you go, it's all yours. Thank have we got a deal? Much. We have. Are you yes. happy? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you much, very much. Karen. I suppose they're all going to come out of the woodwork now, aren't they? <laughs> oh, no, I'll keep the rest. <laughs> Pretty much bang on the money with that deal, Karen, and it looks like we have one happy seller too. <laughs> Time to head back to James now, where it looks like young seller Taylor has brought in some backup for this deal. You brought your bodyguard then? Yes. <laughs> so now, whose who's vase is this? Mine. It's yours, OK. And why have you got it? My great-grand passed it down to my grand, to my mum, to me. So you're the fourth generation of your yes. family to own it. Do you know what date it is? Um, no. Have you, have you looked it up? Did you know that this top here was silver? Yes. You knew that? So somewhere around here we can find a hallmark. So we've got the date letter for B, which is 1926. So how old does that make it, Taylor? 85 years. 85 years old, that's very good. And then you've got this moulded probably first and then it's cut. So all this is cut with a, with a wheel, fast spinning wheel. So it's quite a nice thing and very typical of, of the 1920s. Have you ever cut flowers and put in it? Um, it's been in my granny's glass cabinet for quite a while. OK, so she hasn't used it as a vase? I don't no, think so. Because that's what it is, isn't it? It's a flower yes. vase, yeah. And if, um, if you sell it today, what are you going to do with the money? Um, I'm going to give it... I'm going to get my gran a present. Are you? Yeah. What, with all of it? Mm, you might keep yeah. a bit of commission for yourself? A little bit. OK. Well, um, I'll put a bit of money on the table. It's not going to be a huge amount, but you might like it. Right, I'd like to offer you... 20, 40, 50 pounds for it. What do you think about that? Uh, he was hoping for a bit more. more than that. Hoping for a bit more. So here's a bit more, a very small bit more, 55. We said a bit more, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, I still don't think that's enough for Not not the family heirloom. We'll try one more, take those away, and get another one of those up. All right, sixty pounds on the table, Taylor. Um, which is about as much as I as I think I want to give for it, because I've got to make a little profit. Uh, I don't think so. You was expecting not quite a little bit more. Well, I think you're going to have to take it to auction yeah. and have a gamble. That's the best thing to do. Have you ever been to an auction before? No. No. Well, it'll be a good experience for you. Thank you. you might turn into an auctioneer. <laughs> And thank you for bringing it along. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Great stuff. Thanks for your time. Bye, Sean. Oh, that's brave, Taylor. 
Let's head over to the auction now where Taylor's mum has popped along to get in on the action. What do you think, Lisa? Do you think it was the right decision? I think it's worth a little bit more. OK. Hopefully. OK, so we're all here, we all agree. A bit of a gamble. We need to get more than the 60 that was offered. The reserve is 70. It's 70 to 90 pound the estimation. Is it going to make it? What do you think? I like to see that. Confidence, yes. Let's see if you're right. What should we say for that? Some at 100 pounds for it. 100. <coughs> 50 to go then. 50 pounds, anybody? 50. 50. Slow start. 40. 40 pounds bid at 40. Five now, surely. At 40 pounds bid. Any more now? At 40 bid. I'll take two if it's going to help anyone. At 40 bid. 42 now. 42 bid. 45 bid. 45 bid. 48 bid. And 50 bid. And five bid. 60 bid. Creeping on the internet against the room. Bid 70? 70 bid, surely. At 65. I'll take 68 if it's going to help. At 65. 68. 68 with you. Thank you. 68 bid. At 68. 70 now, surely. 70 pounds, surely. 70 down there. At 70 pounds. Back in. You're out. Just in time. 70 quid. At 70 pounds. At 70 pounds. Then last call then in the room at 70 pounds. 70 pounds under the gavel. We take away the commission. That leaves 60 pounds. It was always going to be a tight one. 60 pounds on the deal this day and 60 pounds today. So what are you going to do with the 60 pounds? Get Gran a gift. OK, I like that. Get Gran a gift. So the 60 pounds is going on Gran's gift. Now that's what I call a real deal. Coming up, Karen dishes out the dosh. They are, and if you don't take that, you're absolutely mad. What makes you think that? And there's a diagnosis from Dr Dickinson. <laughs> I'm just checking if he's mad or not. <laughs> no. Find out soon. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Grantham. As our dealers are put through their paces in the dealer's den, Stuart has been presented with an intriguing terracotta figure. It was my parents. I can remember it from at least about three years old. I always liked it and called it the carrot man. But it's not a carrot, it's a no, turnip. No, it's not, is it? No. Is it just the one piece or were there several, you remember? No, just that one. At first glance, it looks very Austrian. Now, the Austrians were famous, we say, for their garden gnomes and terracotta figures like this. Mm. You've heard about garden gnomes. Yeah. You know, you see them today in concrete. But they were like this quality when they were first made in... 1860, 1880, um, and that's what I liken it to. That's why I want to think that it's Austrian. But I've had a look underneath and it says Torquay. And, and there are good potteries in Torquay mm. in this sort of yeah. material, usually glazed, I will say that. A little bit of damage on it, you notice yes. that. A few yeah. chips on its brim here. Yeah. And a few chips around the bottom. But uh -huh. I would have thought it won't make a, a lot of difference to the value of it. It's come down the family, you've told us all about that. Um, why have you bought it here today, then? Why do you want to sell it? This doesn't fit in with our home now. We've it doesn't? Now the children have all gone. Let's see if I can buy it. Let's see if I can find some money. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. Mm, what there. you were thinking? More than you were thinking. <laughs> You're getting there. Getting there. Mm. I'll do 110. I'll do 110, see if we can tempt you with that. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 110. Is that enough to tempt you? Would you put another one on? No, that's your final offer. Yep. Had it not got the chips in it, I'm always a great... Yeah. You know, I like things perfect, but I like it. So. You like it. OK, we have a deal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Blimey, you did like that, Stuart. But at almost double the estimate, will he still be able to sell it on for a profit? Find out later on. Over to Karen, and it looks like she's taken a shine to her next item. Lovely to meet you, Chris. Hi, Karen. And even lovelier to meet the item you bought in to show me. Tell me all about it. Well, I can tell you, all I can tell you is that it's got matches in one compartment and it used to have snuff in the other. Really? Yes. And I can remember asking my father to explain about the snuff and he said, would you like oh, to try no, some? Sure. So I tried a bit of snuff and of course it made me sneeze and I've never tried it since. <laughs> oh dear. And the initials on the front is TTL. Yeah. That stands for Thomas Talbot Lockton. 
okay. that's my father's name. We better get stuck in, don't we? Right, okay. Right, first of all, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's very it's nice. It's beautiful quality. Someone's been cleaning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Lovely, lovely engraving on it. It's super engraving. And what is so rare, look, it doesn't open on a hinge, no, it does doesn't. it? No. Right, so let me have a quick look at the mark. Right, see straight away we got a young young Victoria head, so we know pretty much where it was. Right. Um, yeah, we got the line percent, so we know it's silver. H and T, which I've got a feeling is Hilliard and Thompson. Does that yes. ring a bill? Yes. Um, date letter F, so Birmingham, about 1854. Okay, so we're in agreement on we are. everything so far. Yes. <laughs> we're doing well. I'm going to try and buy this off you. No, I decided to bring it here today just to see. You know, have it valued or what it was worth. See if you could be tempted to part with That's it. That's right, or whatever, yes. I do. Yeah, so it's so, my job to try and tempt you, is it? It is really, yes. You will stop me when I, I get will. too carried away, right? Certainly. You? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Now, if this was an ordinary common or garden vesta, I think it would be that. But I'm going to have to go a little bit further, aren't I? I think so. So it's 120. 140, 160, 180. There you go, Chris, 200 pounds. That's a really good offer, isn't it? Take it, take it. No, no. just in time. <laughs> Definitely not. Just in time. Now, it's pretty obvious to me that Karen would like to buy this. It is a super object. Let me tell you what the independent valuers and the auctioneers say. 150 to 200 or 150 to 250. Now, even if you've got 250 in the sale room, you're going to take away 40 quid. You'd have another tenner. 210. My advice is this. Karen is mouthing, take the money. I'm saying you might have a chance at auction. <laughs> right. I feel if you let Karen tempt you a little bit more, it could keep you away from the auction. And that's what I would do, Karen. It's a good speculative lot. It's got something about it which makes it different. Thank you. There we are, Karen. Mm. That's the score. They are, and if you don't take that, you're absolutely mad. Why? What makes you think that? Because I'm trying to buy it. I know you are. <laughs> but I, I, I personally think... I'm just checking if he's mad or not. <laughs> no. I personally think that that is a very unusual object, and there is not many of those about. I know that for a fact. I'm getting out of the way because he can do more than I can do yeah. on this. I know there's not many of those about. There's 215, Chris, on the table, and that is to uh, appease you. Put another green one on there. Another fiver. Another fiver. Oh, you're happy. And this. you've got a deal. Got God, a deal. you know I want to buy this, don't you? That's <laughs> it. You've got a deal. You've got a deal at last. Thank you. <laughs> Striker Light, £220. Seems like your heart could have ruled your head on that one, Karen. Hi, Jeff. Nice it's across the dealer's den now where James is looking for answers. Why and where? <laughs> well, the thing I know about it is that my uh, mother and father moved into a pub and uh, they found them in the cellar. So they didn't use them ever? No. They had them in the pub as kind Just of decoration? Ornaments, yeah. 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 So they don't have any particular kind of sentimental value for you? No, no. not really, no. 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 They've just been sat in the cupboard. Yeah. This, this one's in better condition, the smaller one, and I see that's got a GR mark on it, so George VI, so that's post-war. Amazing, they were still making them after the war, isn't it? You'd have thought mm. the copper would have been in too short supply yeah. for, for making jugs out of. So that's better condition, but not, not very old. And this one, which I should think is Victorian, yeah, because there's a VR mark on the, on the lead there, is really a bit knackered, isn't it? It is. It's seen better days. <laughs> to, to say the least. And it's been soldered and repaired all around there. It really has, really has seen better days. But it's very interesting that they came from a pub. Mm -hmm. I have to say that uh, I'm not hugely keen on them, um, but I'll put a bit of money on the table. Let's see, um, see how we go. So I'd like to offer you 20. 25 quid for them. No, I think they're worth more than that. Well, I hope they're worth more. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be onto a loser. <laughs> OK, no good. So. Another 10, so that's 30 pounds. What do you think about that? No, any more. Not from me. But what about auction? You never know, at auction, if you get two people who really want them, 
they could make you know quite a lot more. Oh yeah, I'll and go to auction then. We've been to auction before. No. Oh well, there you are. It's a good new experience for for nothing. <laughs> anyway, I hope you do really well. Thank you. Could Nick's confidence be dented at the auction? Let's find out as we see them go under the hammer. You sat down with James late. I'm surprised because James normally buys this kind of thing. He offered you 30 quid. Yeah. So you didn't like that idea, no. I don't think. I think they're worth a little bit more. OK, you think they're worth a bit more. I think you were right. They're here now. It's a close-run thing because they're not easy to sell, but they should bring a bit more. The reserve is 40 quid. But you're prepared to be flexible if we got close to it. Yeah. Who's going to start me at 50 pounds for them? 50. 40 to go then. 40 pounds, anybody? 40. 30. 30 pounds to go, surely. 30. Just need a little rub up, just like the auctioneer. 30 bid, 32. 35. 35. I have 35. 38 now, surely, at 35. Put a bid. 38 now, 38 bid coming in. You're hovering. Go on, have a bid. You know you want it. At 35. 38 now, surely, 38 bid. At 38 bid. 40 now, may I say, at 38. Last call at 38 pounds. We're selling. OK, 38 pounds it made under the gavel. A bit disappointing, really. I thought it would have done better than that. It's just under £33, taking away the commission. What do you think? Happy with that. Yeah. In some ways, it's a bit of a shame, really, because 33 quid for two copper jokes is no money. Didn't you fancy taking them home and saying to the wife, go on, nice cleaning job for you here? No, she didn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's thinking, I don't do that. <laughs> OK, on the day... Real deal, 38 quid. Take home, 33 quid. Nobody wants to do the polishing. That's the real deal. Coming up. What are you actually going to do with the money? Probably get some Botox or some filler or something, you know, Mark. Keep it all up together. <laughs> Gotta say, you remind me a lot of my wife, because you sound just like her. The husband's gone, the tea set's going, and I'm going to have a nice face. Will Mark supply the cash injection they need? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. As we come to the end of a great day, there's time for one final deal, and it looks like Mark might have his hands full. Phoebe and Louise have brought some glamour to the dealer's den, along with their attractive four-piece silver tea set. I need to know the story. How did you come by it? Well, it was a wedding present, yeah, 25 years ago. And I can't keep it for another day to clean it. It must go, Mark. <laughs> You shouldn't be telling me that so early on. I know, really, I shouldn't, but there. Was it sit on the side? Yes, it sits on the side and gathers <laughs> dust. So, if we do manage to have a deal, what are you actually going to do with the money? Probably get some Botox or some filler or something, you know, Mark, keep it all up together. <laughs> I've got to say, you remind me a lot of my wife, as you sound just like her. Yes. It's actually lucky that you've got this given as a lovely wedding present. Really? Well, I'm going to get something nice out of the wedding. The husband's gone, the tea set's going, and I'm going to have a nice face. <laughs> you are a determined lady, I there am. is no doubt about that. Yeah. And I can see you're going to have a great time. I am. I'm going to have a fab fabulous time, aren't we, darling? Oh, yeah. There's two of you here, but I can feel somebody staring at me from behind. Is this your daughter? That's my daughter, yes. I've got to say, she has the most beautiful white teeth. That's because we sold the silver bowl. <laughs> the teeth are from the silver bowl? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> OK, <laughs> right, OK. I suppose we'd actually better start talking about the item here, the lovely four-piece tea set. Now, what do you think, ladies? Yes, good idea. And it was made in Dublin in 1907. And it was made by a firm called Marshalls. Right. Lovely quality item. Very, very well made. The Irish silver market is very good at the moment. There's a demand for right. this quality of mm -hmm. silverware. Oh. What I like about it personally, I love the embossing. It tells a story in itself. Yes. If you look at it, I mean, it's. I know you don't like cleaning it, but you've know, got but a lot of beauty. No, yeah, it is lovely. I mean, the swan on the top here, and the dog, the hunting dog, which yeah. you can see here. And the lion. And the, 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 these are what we call lion pad foot feet. Well, they and, are beautiful. Uh, just lovely quality. And what is nice is we find with a lot of tea sets that the items were bought at a later date and added to it. So one piece might have been bought in 1907, but another piece they might have bought in 1920. Right, okay. But this one is all the same maker and all the same date. It's great. 
All right. Well, I, I really like this set. I'm not going to beat around the bush. Okay. It ticks all the boxes for me. It's a thing I can sell. We've even got the little pair of sugar tongs there. Yeah. Look, yeah, up we go in there. Uh, it's great. So it all boils down to money. Exactly. What do you prefer, red or blue? I nice. like red, yeah. You like red? Right, OK, let's get it out. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500, 550, 600, 650, 700 pounds. I'm not finishing. Good. But I'm going to have to go to the blue now. I'm sorry. 700 on the table there. Yeah, that's no good. 720, 740, 760, 780, 800, 820, 840, 860, 880. 900 pounds. Now, that's a lot of Botox. The table goes round nicely. Yeah. You, you want more to go round there? Well, would be nice. Are you having Botox? So, I'd like a bit, some. yes. We don't want her to be on her own. Two against one, I've got a problem. I think I should call in David. What do you think? I think we should. Phoebe and Louise, isn't it? Yes. yes. Sisters? Yes. yes. OK. Glamorous-looking tea service. Mm. Nine to twelve hundred pounds is where the estimation is. I look at this and think, forget the ounces. It's the style of it, the shape of it, silver, silver gilt. I think this has every chance of doing a lot better in the sale room. Plus, it's Irish. So I'm going to say, think round the top end of the estimate, the 1,200. And even then, if you want to try it and you're not desperate to sell it, let's go to the auction. Let's open it out to a wider audience. Internet's there. Irish buyers could be on the internet and could buy this. There you go. 900 pounds, you girls are still not happy, are no, you? We're not. You want some more. We do. And after what David said, I feel obligated to put a bit more on the table. Yes. So let's move the pot there a little bit, shall we? Let's move that there. 900 on the table, 20, 40, 60, 80, 1,000 pounds. Are we getting close or are we there? No, we're not there. Getting close. We're getting close. 20, 40, 60, 80, 1100 pounds cash. A little bit more. Yeah. Now, a little bit. Yeah. What do we mean by a little bit? Put another 100 pounds down and we'll have a deal. You know, I like this, don't you? you can... It's beautiful. It, it's I, lovely. It's my taste. It is. You know, it's a very good piece of silver. And the Irish market. <laughs> totally agree with what David said. There is still a strong market out there. People still want to buy. Definitely. But I'd like to give you, how about another 20, 40, 60? How about 11, 60? No, you've got 14, you and... Uh, how did you see that? Yeah. yeah. Well, we could. <laughs> so if I put that down, we've got a deal, ladies. We've got a deal. £1,200 on, on the table there, ladies. Is that a deal? That's the deal, Mark. Thank you very much indeed. It's and a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank pleasure. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, it looks like Mark took the tea set at face value and paid a handsome price. Let's see if our dealers struck up a good deal for their items. You and you're not going to be in trouble with your wife? I hope not, Karen. <laughs> Karen managed to squeeze out a small profit for the Susie Cooper tea set by selling it to another dealer for £100. Unfortunately, the silver Vesta hasn't set the world alight and is still unsold. Chris, you're a hot man. Oh, Karen admits that she may have paid a bit too much on the day. So that's a it's deal. A deal. Thank you. Stuart decided to split the pen collection and so far has sold half of them to a dealer for £150. Unfortunately for Stuart, the terracotta figure remains unsold in his shop. It looks like he may have paid over the odds for that one. Yeah, Mark sold the gold watch chain for a respectable £470, although he had to work hard for it. How about 11 60? No, you've got 14 grand. Uh, how did you see that? Mark cleared a healthy profit for the four piece silver tea set by selling it for £1,400. This makes Mark today's dealer of the day. Well done, Mark. <laughs> We've had a great day here in Grantham. There's been lots of action, lots of buying, and lots of selling just the way we like it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.